This is the Cheaty Tech I Mate. Today, we're gonna check it out. My name's Jim, and this is the Edge of Tech. So recently, my friends over at Cheaty Tech emailed me and asked me if I wanted to check out their new iMate device. It's a 270 by 200 by 200 fully enclosed 3D printer. So I checked it out and I said, sure, I would love to check this thing out. They say it's capable of printing high temp filaments, which is awesome. I tested it with the included PLA Plus, which comes with it, and I tried some PETG, but my PETG was a little old and kept cracking. This has an advanced metal frame. It has a three and a half inch touch screen, which actually works very well. It comes with not one, but two of their flexible magnetic boards. But as you'll see later in the video, I had some issues getting prints off. So you definitely want to put something on this. These things stick like concrete. They are super good stick quality for PLA at least. It comes with a, a USB drive like this. It uses a silent motherboard with 2209 stepper drivers. And also the Cheaty software, which is actually a rebranded Kira, but works super good. Cheaty says it has a new generation of nozzles, which helps overall printing. And this one actually came with two, yes, I said two full hot ends. One that comes installed with a 0.04 nozzle and this one, which is a 0.02 nozzle. It comes with all the standard stuff you expect with a 3D printer, including a very, very stiff spatula that's pretty sharp. So I think they know that this thing sticks very well because this thing comes in handy trying to get stuff off the bed. Well, I was not able to get all of it off the bed. I'm gonna have to try more on this one later, but it does come with it. It comes with a glue stick, which later in the video I didn't think it did, but it does come with a glue stick. It comes with a flathead screwdriver and a nice handled Allen wrench, which is great. It does come with some replacement nozzles, which is awesome. And it includes some bed clips. Now these bigger bed clips, you might wanna use for that really strong, strong filament that has a tendency to pull the magnets up. This will be your insurance and hopefully that won't happen. The manual isn't too bad. If you go through the manual, it walks through everything you need to do. Setting this thing up maybe took 10 minutes. It didn't take long at all. I think the longest part about setting this thing up was actually getting the stuff out of the inside because it all comes packed inside, which is very clever on the Cheaty Tech side. It does walk through your first installation. It walks through your bed leveling, as you'll see right here. Uh, when you do that, you'll actually use this little Cheaty Tech bed leveling card that they send with it. It's like a plastic and uh, use this to bed level. It has the instructions right on the front and the instructions are on the screen when you go to the bed leveling tab. Uh, that is really cool. It actually walks you through it. It has three points, the front, right, the front, left, and the back. And then once it's done, it takes you to the center and you set your Z offset from there. Uh, very smart, it does tell you to do it a bunch of times to just make sure you dial it in right. But they do use this little plastic sheet, it's kind of flimsy, to level the bed. Um, just make sure your nozzle's not too hot. I actually was a little hot because I usually use a hot nozzle when I level and I was melting this a little bit. This does come with a small roll of PLA Plus. This does say it's red but it is clearly orange, so I think it's just mislabeled. Uh, so I don't know if this is really PLA Plus, I'm assuming it is, but this is definitely orange as you'll see in the prints later in the video. But that's enough right now, let's get some prints going and we'll start with the first one. So when we left off, I was just getting the test print started and that is this one right here. Now this is an interesting test print. It is a square with a little circle. It is mostly hollow, uh, but it printed really well. But I noticed that this thing holds on the prints super, super tight. Uh, I had to peel this off and I was really afraid I was gonna break it. After that, I went on to the torture toaster. Uh, as you can see, it didn't quite make the cut because I broke the arm off here. Um, I did that by accident because uh, when I got done, it was so stuck to the bed that I had to peel it off. Even though that these flex plates flex like this, it was not letting go. And as you can see on this one right here, there is still filament that I could not get off from that model right there. I tell you, this was amazing and super frustrating at the same time because stuff sticks to these beds. Now they give you two, which is amazing. I have one in here and one here, so they give you two but stuff sticks to them so well, it's almost impossible to get it off. And 
So what I did after this is I actually put some Vision Miner on it and I smeared that bad boy down with some Vision Miner, the Nano Polymer. I love that stuff. And then uh, I did this vase, which came out absolutely amazing. This is the Clock Spring Reciprocal Vase and it turned out absolutely awesome. It came off really nicely once I put that Vision Miner on there. Uh, and I tell you, everything stuck. It was super fast. This thing actually prints super quick. Now with this, I actually used a slicer that came on board. It's the Cheaty Slicer, which is great, but it is actually a reskinned Cura. So that is even better because if you're familiar with Cura, you'll get on this with no problem. They do include, I believe, an S3D profile as well if you want to use that. But the slicer that's included on the SD card worked great. So these are the three prints that I did try so far. The uh, Torture Toaster, the awesome reciprocal vase, and the only test file that comes on this card right there. Now, something they do include, and I mentioned this in the beginning, was glue stick. I probably could have put the glue stick down and printed on this and had a lot better results of getting stuff off, but I didn't use a glue stick. To be honest, I've never used a glue stick ever. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> uh, but I did use the included PLA Plus. It's red, and that's what you see here. Um, to me, it says it's red, but it really looks pretty orange, and you probably can see that from the camera. I don't think this is red. I think it's mislabeled. I believe this is an orange filament. Otherwise, I'm in trouble. The other cool thing that they include that I did not play with yet is the point two hot end. I mean, I'm talking a whole hot end. Uh, they include this. It is a, a really cool thing to include, but I'm just kind of curious why they just didn't include the nozzles instead of a full hot end. But what's really cool is it goes in pretty easily and uh, they give you a complete hot end. So if you ever had any issues, you could actually use this hot end. It's a 0.2 nozzle, so you could print really tiny, nice stuff, but it'll definitely take some more time. But thanks for including an extra hot end. I always like that. Matter of fact, I don't think I've ever seen a manufacturer include an extra hot end in any of the printers I've checked out. So there's a couple things that I noticed with the printer that's a little bit different. Now on the side panels here, uh, it says, if I can pop them out, it says when you're printing PLA to take the side panels off, which are on magnets, and to open the front door. And that's to let the air through. This machine, unlike the Creality CR200B that we saw recently, this machine does not have any ventilation in the case. I believe that this is injection molded and I believe they use this for another machine because if you look at the back of it, there actually is a pattern for a fan, but there's no fan in this. So that's kind of weird where you have to actually take off the panels from the sides and open the front door to print PLA and make sure it prints properly. But with, with that being said, I didn't have any issues uh, with PLA. This It stuck awesome. The only failures I had was getting things off the bed. And you can mitigate that by putting maybe some glue stick or vision miner like I used on the bed. And then it probably won't stick quite as hard. As far as using this for ABS, I have not done that yet. I usually don't print an ABS, but because of this machine, I'm actually going to try it because I see a lot of people had some really good success with that, along with that CR200B. Uh, so I'm going to definitely try that. I did try some PETG. The problem is this PETG is pretty old. It's two years old and it's super brittle. So it kept breaking in the hot end as the print was going down. Uh, so I'm going to try some fresh stuff um, and hopefully I can get that to work. I believe this thing's going to print PETG with no issues, especially using their slicer. All the settings were already input. So that actually really helped. So overall, my thoughts on this machine, I've had it for a couple weeks. I love the prints that I've gotten off of it, uh, these included here. I love that it's enclosed and I can print uh, ABS if I really want to. Although it doesn't have any fans or anything inside the case, I don't think that's gonna be too big of an issue when you're using the higher temperature filaments. PLA though, you're definitely gonna to wanna to pull the side panels off. Take the top off, I forgot to mention that and open the door. I don't think that's a big problem when you're printing PLA. You probably could get away with just taking the top off and the sides because I did that for this first print. I left the door closed, it was fine. But overall, very nice machine. I can't say nothing sticks to this because it sticks like cement. So definitely 
put something between your prints and this sheet because it'll hold it on tight. Leveling was easy like we saw. Everything else runs very well. It's direct drive, so that is really cool too. Would I get this? Uh, I definitely would look at this if I'm looking at an enclosed machine. I really do think this 3D printer as a whole is very nice. It prints very good. Uh, if I had the budget, I'm looking for an enclosed machine and I wanted to do the higher temp filaments, I definitely would look at this as an option because I do believe it's a great machine and it'll do very well. Well, I hope you guys learned something today. And as always, keep printing. Hey everybody, give me that thumbs up if you liked the video today. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that already. And the bell right over here to get notified anytime we go live on Hot Makes or another great video comes out on the channel. I really appreciate you guys watching. You rock.